Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week I wanted to introduce you to my other podcast. Uh, It's called Advanced Real Estate Investing Talk. It's a little bit different than A Canadian Investing in the U.S. It's not specific to investing in the U.S., but it's uh, it's more of a talk show. So instead of me interviewing people, it's me, Ari, and Darcy uh, doing a weekly show where we talk about a topic and we teach a lot of stuff on it. So I think you'll like it. Um, I'm putting on one of my favorite ones. At least it's the one that has a lot of information that I think it should help a lot of people. Um, here it goes. <laughs> Well, welcome everybody to this new episode of the Advanced Real Estate Chat and Talk. And uh, I'm here with my uh, co-host, Glenn and Darcy. And this episode will be dedicated to a specific deal that Glenn has brought to our attention. Um, And we'll we'll look at it together. And uh, so you can see, you know, how we look at deals, how we analyze them, what we look for. And so for me... Uh, I, I I like to have a, a, a general sense of the town I'm investing in. So what I did, uh, the deal is in Toledo. So I did some some research uh, about the um, MSA Toledo, the uh, Metropolitan Statistical Area, and uh, so the population is 276,000 in 2019. So it's it's way more than 100,000, uh, and the metro area has been stable at around a half a million for the past five years. Sorry, I'll cut you off already. <laughs> you said 100,000. So is that a number that you look for is 100,000? Yeah, I like I like over 100,000 uh, when I invest. I agree. And the reason I, that's one of my rules as well now is because I bought a deal in Lacey Springs, Alabama, which is- Where? Te- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it's like half an hour south of Huntsville, Alabama. And I was like, hey, this is a killer deal. The problem is you, you don't realize that whenever there is, it's a small town, there's actually fewer lenders. Even the nationwide lenders will be like, it's one of their criteria that it needs to have a population. And it's one of those things that just came up. Yep. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what I didn't know. And it turned into be a little bit more difficult to find a lender, but I still did it. But anyway. Continue. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, yeah. There are less lenders, uh, more difficult to find buyers if you want to sell, if, if selling yep. is your exit strategy. Uh, and also it can be a one horse, a one horse town. And then when the horse leaves, when the uh, economic driver leaves. <laughs> then, then well, I, I think that this town is more of a zero horse town. It's, it's like a bedroom community to Huntsville, right? So it's, okay. it, it, there is, it's like a, it's a village, right? It's not really anything. Everyone who lives there who has a job, you know, drives to the city, right? It's, yeah. yeah. So anyway, continue, continue. Yeah. I mean, way, off, so way off topic already. <laughs> I looked at the economy and uh, you can find some uh, data about the, who are the main employers. I like to know who they are and what type of uh, uh, industry they are in. And uh, so Mercy Health is big, uh, employs of about 6,000. And then you have university, hospital and government. So which are... Uh, it's not the private sector, but uh, yeah. And I also looked at the job growth uh, and the unemployment rate has been declining uh, month after month in 2020. And then maybe to speak about the location within the city, uh, Glenn, I know you've done some research about that. Can you, can you share with us? Yeah, so well, I mean, let's just go right to the very start because some people are like, what are you guys talking about? So first of all, we've, I found this property, $700,000 for a 16 unit in Toledo, Ohio. Um, the average rent was about 535. The market rate for the rent was about 575. Um, that's some way, very simple thing, just so people know what we're talking about. Um, we, we, we did kind of analyze this deal last week. And so full disclosure, we're kind of, kind of regurgitating this and we're going to try and make it so it works really well on audio because we don't do a video show for this. Um, and so it's a little trickier when you don't see the numbers, but I think we can do this really well. Um, we did look at the neighborhood um, and 
I'll talk about the apps we're using at the same time. We looked at uh, Neighborhood Scout is what I like to look at for neighborhoods. Um, and so we looked through and we, we looked it up. It's part of Central Ave Park is the neighborhood that it's part of. And we were looking for the crime rates, um, the population growth, the all the growth things. And it was actually, because it's up on the west corner of the of Toledo, it actually was perfectly green, like it, which green in on Neighborhood Scout is good. So it hit the perfect targets for that specific neighborhood, which is like a, it's a triangle, but it's basically like a 20 by 20 block that that is that neighborhood. Yeah. And so it was and one of the top micro neighborhoods. neighborhoods are important. Yes. The wrong side of the street is the wrong side of the street. Honestly. Yeah. So it was, it was yeah, right location, in the middle location, of it location. and it was, yeah, in the middle yeah. of that neighborhood. And so everything, it was top neighborhood. Um, so that's what we did to, to look at the neighborhoods. We wanted to, we, we don't want to make this up. It's good to get like a local person to look at them as well, which I did. Um, but yeah, that's where I went to verify. Trust, but verify. So we, yeah. I went and looked it up and you can, on Neighborhood Scout, you, it'll give you m more larger demographics for free, like, uh, and crime rates for free. If you want to dive down and get like the details of Central Ave Park, you can pay, pay for that part and it'll give you like exactly it'll pinpoint where the crimes happened in that but that is an area that there was very little crime it was like one of the top neighborhoods uh in that yeah. respect yeah yeah our our checking of areas because we have limited resources and time and always a remote is the same thing but we don't there's na na neighborhood scout.com doesn't exist in canada so we're trying to aggregate the same kind of information uh we have a little checklist. We're looking for towns big enough to support uh, secondary education, university, college, uh, vocational colleges. I'm looking for places that have airports and expanding airport authorities. Wherever WestJet lies, because they're sort of the growing ones, I'm interested. That's, you know, I'm going to use other people's really good research. Mm -hmm. They're building a giant Costco uh, that tells me there's middle class people with money to spend. And you, met, you mentioned like the, the WestJet test. There's also the Starbucks test, right? Yes. So you yep. can do the Starbucks test and you can just look for where the Starbucks locations are. And it'll exactly. literally, they've done all the research. Mm -hmm. um, the McDonald's test isn't necessarily a good one because they will put those in sort of- Yeah, they'll put it on high traffic. They'll, yep. count, they'll discount the neighborhood and count cars. And that's not really good for me. I need the neighborhood. Who's moving in exactly. that neighborhood? Yeah, so, so the, the Starbucks test is a little bit better. Yeah. Yep, so we do something really similar. Uh, we have like a 20 point question thing and we weight it. Uh, we give a one to five. It's really super simple on an Excel spreadsheet. And those are the categories in a target market. Um, that's how we can permit. The only other thing that we do, I really like the feel to walk a neighborhood. I need to be there myself, mm -hmm. look for the dark spots. I pretty much almost in every circumstance, I sat in a rental car in a parking lot and looked at the building for hours. And, and when we were looking at this one, you were talking, you were looking for gas stations, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm looking for who's where, what's the traffic going to go, because people are going to walk to those uh, um, AMPMs, they're going to walk to 7-Eleven, uh, where's the problem areas and what's this place going to look like. I just, yep. just want to know, I want to feel it and often I just walk it and you, you get a different, it's outside of a car window, it's a different feel for a community and we've been stung a couple of times where I haven't done that and that's one of my sort of field tests. Um, but I think we do all the rest of that. Based yeah. on experience, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Just in some different senses. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, we went to talk about some other metrics, uh, vacancy rate. Yep. Yeah. I use the CMHC reports for here, but I also scout the Kijiji Craigslist ads in Canada. Uh, I don't have a U.S. property, so yeah. there's other tools. You use those with your plan, right? And yeah, well, honestly, for the vacancy rate, I just Googled it. <laughs> uh, that's how I did it. And what the problem with using Google for some of your numbers is I did the same thing as I Googled for the cap rate of Toledo, right? Because we're buying a 16 unit, so we're dealing with commercial financing. Uh, and so it's all going to be based on cap rate. We're not doing it based on comps, like a, a one to four unit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where it got a little bit sticky because we ran all our numbers based on the Google cap rate. Yep. But afterwards, you know, doing your own homework, I mm -hmm. called up some mortgage brokers and be like, what do you think the cap rate is? And they were not close. The numbers between the, what uh, they believed the cap rate for Toledo would be and what Google thought were very different. So um, based on Google, if you do Google cap rate in Toledo, they say 7.4% 
is the cap rate. Whereas if I go to the multifamily person, uh, or, or sorry, the multifamily lender, um, they say B class is a 5.24, C class is a 6.02, uh, value added acquisition 6.4, new luxury metro is 4.6, and an A class is a 4.4, or sorry, 4.87. So, Darcy, I'll throw this in your court. That is millions of dollars difference. Exactly. So wow, by, yeah. by them having yeah. a lower cap rate, is that more in my advantage or my disadvantage? Uh, it's a great question. Because if <laughs> you're trying to finance, they're, they're not going to give you the money. The lenders are not going to give you the money because they're applying the higher cap rate. But if you're selling, the more compression you get, the better you get on your exit. Yeah, as a buyer, the lower the cap rate, the higher the property is going to cost. Yeah. yeah. Do, and so, listeners might not know how that metric works, the math on that. Yeah, so even with these numbers, like we, we filled this all into a spreadsheet already. And we, I put it in as a 7.4 here. So I put it back to 7.4. And that had the um, value of this property at 691, which is pretty close to the 700. But if the lender say this is where of, uh, I would say that we'll put this at C class. So it's a little bit higher. Um, it might be B class. So it's in that mid range, but the C class was at 6.02. So I'll just put in six because it's whatever. And that now is instantly made the value of the property $853,000. And we were looking to buy it for 700. Yeah. But um, so when you run the numbers, so you have the trading 12 I saw in the package. So when you use those numbers and then do your calculations to find out the NOI. And uh, if you use the, what cap rate has the agent be, been using? when they decide, when they determine the price? Uh, I don't have that in front of me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what, what, do we, do, is what's it in those the sheets NOI or and what? what's... Yeah. As presented, it was a 6.6 .6 cap. Now for okay. listeners, this is the part, my wife's been in this business 20 years. Every time she's like, remind me again about cap rate. Good as which? I said, well, it depends on your point of view. So the realtor was... They had a 6.6. 6.6 cap. But when we calculated it out with market rents, the cap rate rate was higher, so we're presenting a pretty good deal. And we're actually going with a higher cap rate, which is a yeah. good deal because there's opportunity there. Yeah, and when we're talking about opportunity on this deal, um, there is a vacant unit, right? And yeah. there is a unit, uh, so the, there is a vacant unit and then the market rents are below market. Yeah, so what would you have done to this? Why did we find this appealing? So here's a property in a region that we, we could all agree on this, possibility. So over 100,000 people, there's an attractive cap rate, there's a property that we got some leverage, something you can do to it, we can raise the rents. Yeah, there is value added opportunity. Yeah, and what for our listeners, value added, it means we can apply our expertise in some way to leverage the value up on this property. Fix it, fill it, uh, what are the R's um, in the Burr method? Oh, uh, um, so buy, uh, renovate, uh, rent, refinance, repeat. Yeah. yeah. So which of these levers can you apply to this property? On this one, the most obvious one, increasing up the, un in the unit and then increase the rents. So how does it work in Toledo, in Ohio, in terms of rent increase? What are the, what are the laws? Is it rather lenient with the tenant or pro landlord, uh, pro tenant? <laughs> yeah. uh, I know, if, I'm pretty sure that it's, you can raise it whatever you like on lease renewals is what oh, okay. I believe Ohio is. I maybe you should check that, but <laughs> that's yeah. what I, I'm pretty sure that's what it where we're, we're because Ohio's. that's going to impact the business model and the yeah. So it, it it changes your time frames, right? Like you know, if it was in a state where you can raise it instantly, the forty bucks, right? Because that's what we're saying. It's everything's forty dollars under market value. And first of all, market value um, it's provided by the selling realtor, right? So you <laughs> better do your due diligence and call your property management and say. Can I actually rent it for this amount? Yeah, Is this realistic? <laughs> yeah. Because you can use, um, you, you can go use the tools online. You can use the rental meter and figure out what it says that this area should market or rent for. But, you know, <laughs> tools are only as good as tools are, but like it is good for um, a lot of this stuff is good for yeah. putting your numbers in and analyzing a deal. But part of it, has to be to verify these numbers with people who are actually going to put the tenants in there. But yeah. you know, I don't like to bother um, property managers or realtors or anyone too much until I've done 
some basics, right? Yeah. And so once you've done all your basics, then you start to verify because you don't want to waste anyone's time or they're not going to want to work with you. No, and it's worth knowing they're motivated, but where they're coming from. Banks want really conservative numbers. Selling realtors want really outrageous numbers. Um, you know, that where's the source of them? And, and that's worth being critical of thinking, who wants what out of this deal and where are those numbers coming from? For people that are listening, if you're driving, this is a bad idea. Don't use your calculator. Or if you're running and listening to this, I'll do the numbers for you. But when Glenn talks about raising that rent by $40 a suite, I'll go real slowly. $40 times 16 units is only $640 a month. It's not a big deal. You don't think it's a big deal, but that's 12 months in a year times 12, $7,680 a year. Still, it's not going to change anyone's life. But then you apply the cap rate. <laughs> but when you apply a local cap rate, and based on Glenn's research, a B-class building, which with this is this is a pitched roof, um, uh, uh, you, you know what? construction. What would you say, B or C? Yeah, it, it's somewhere in there. It, it might be a B because okay. that, that neighborhood was so good. Yeah, but well, I, I was when I was running my numbers, I went for C just because it was more conservative. Okay, so if you have $7,680 new money a year, and you divide yeah. it by your cap rate, which you think you, you might get from refinance by 0.055, that's $140,000 new value to the building. That's, that's why you would do it. You could buy that, and any money you get off the purchase, they don't sell it for $750, you've added that into what you can possibly get when you sell it. So you do a little bit of work, raise rent, and only $40, you can re release another $140,000 new value for that building upon refinance, and get substantially most of your money back on refinance and reinvest yeah. it and do it again. And, and a lot of people that would look at this deal because they're used to analyzing single family homes, they'd go, okay, what's my net operating income, right? $51,000, right? Is what we have in our calculator. And you go, oh, and it's based on what's our down payment. Uh, what do I have that in here? Uh, the, 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 somewhere in here. What are we going to be in? Oh, we're going to be in for $157,000 as the down payment, right? And yeah. they, they calculate it that way. But you know, that is good, but like really it's a little bit different when you're looking at these multifamilies just by, you know, decreasing some expenses, increasing some rent, uh, applying it to a cap rate, you could do a refi in a reasonable time. And that's one thing that I did have my hard time hard putting my head around because I was always used to doing these one to four units, right? And yeah. changed to doing the larger multis, it's not run the same way. No, and that's, yeah, that's called false depreciation and that's the... Yeah. The name of the game. Yeah. yeah. And the notable thing here is that $146,800 you got by raising rents for 40 bucks is roughly equivalent to the 150000 you put in your down payment. That's the only money you have risk in this deal. So your return, if you did this in one year, raised all the rents and realized this $7,600, refinanced and got 146000 out, you have almost 100% annualized return. You got all your money out in one year. Say it in takes two year, years. Yeah. yeah, the first year. What if it takes two years? What if you're a little bit slow? What if you're a little bit, you know, it just takes a while. Yeah. That's a 50% return on the investment. 100% of your money spread over two years. An annualized return of 50%. That's why real estate works so well. Um, I mean, I, 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 just did a, stocks. I just did a quick search and... Uh, it seems that there is no rent control in Ohio, so you may you may be able to increase those rents with proper okay. notice. Okay, I wasn't sure because yeah. I know I've invested in a bunch of markets, and I know some of them you have to wait till uh, there are contract states, and you have to wait until the contracts up. But if yeah. Ohio is not a contract state, usually it's a thirty days notice or sixty days notice, depending on the state. Yeah, yeah. and we're not jerks. This is we're talking about a forty dollar annualized rent. Well, what is that 8%. rate? Like, that's a, what does that 8%. work out to? That's eight percent. Eight percent. Yeah, you so you spread already? it over two years. You give them a four percent increase in 2021, four percent in 2022. This is not unreasonable, and you realize the 50 percent annualized return on your investment. You provided uh, below market housing. It's safe. It's clean. It's attractive, and it's reproducible. And everybody wins. Your investors win. Your tenants win. Your family is fed. This is. I'm just tying a bow on that. That's beautiful. That's our work, folks. <laughs> Darcy, Darcy, so say this. So you're going to go through and you're going to raise the rents $40 across the board on 16 units, right? Yeah. And fill unit. Um, yeah. Are you going to have to uh, 
like do some sort of renovations to justify this or is it just cool to just go in there would you feel that you should be like updating a lobby or something you know, if the, if the building's already in good shape like sh you should be spending money on something too right yeah we looked at it and why i looked at it and said you know those are aluminum windows from the 80s because i you know zoomed in with google and you can see on the south and the west sides the shingled roof there's a bit of lifting it's probably an original roof pushing 30 something years right or maybe 40 years maybe it's a second or two 20 year old roofs that's probably going to need redress. At some point, you're going to take that refinance money and redo the roof and some of the aesthetics. But this thing was looking really good. They look beautiful. I mean, I do because I take pride in my properties and I want any of my investors were to drive by to go, yeah, we own that. We have a piece of that. We have 20% of that. And they'll feel proud. I don't want to have crappy buildings. I'm just not that way. But this one, I surprised me. I mean, I was looking at Toledo flights. And then Glenn said, oh, so. there you go. You don't uh, need to fly. Maybe I Boston don't. would invest in the U.S. <laughs> Ari and I don't need to fly. Like, well, once the once the borders open, like, um, it's not a very far drive. It's just on the other side of Detroit, basically. Now, I'm from Western Canada, so remind me, Toledo is that along the equ equator? Is that like a sunny, warm, tropical? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Oh, well, uh, unless you consider Detroit a sunny area. Well, <laughs> warmer than some places I've been invested yeah. in Saskatoon and Edmonton, but uh, yeah. No anyway, wrap this up, Ari. Like we, yeah, I think we, we, we covered well, this. A, I think that the, that shows, you know, the power of uh, investing in multifamilies, and and that's why, you know, uh, you know, we, we we like discussing it, and we hope that you've enjoyed the show and uh, yeah. appreciated our deep dive into this deal that uh, Glenn brought us. And uh, yeah, if you want more of these, just let us know and we're happy to do so. And yeah, hopefully you gain out of the episode and we'll see you all next week. All right. Bye. Thanks, guys.